Hey, good afternoon, Table Rock. It's really exciting to be with you guys here. I am here with Victor, who just talked today on the LGBTQ plus uh, and the hot topics of the summer. So yeah, I'm excited to be here with you and talk about all this. Me too. Here we go. Yeah. So my um, yeah, just open it up. If you were just gonna pick one thing, you're like, I want you to walk away with this today. What would that be? I uh, really like the, just the reality that it's God's house, God's rules. Okay. And uh, then that, uh, yeah, regardless of uh, what the culture says and where, how I might feel about it or anything else, that it's God's call and that he takes action for folks like us who break his rules. So Yeah, mm -hmm. that's incredible like the fact that it is his house his rules but he's like yeah still seeks out after us yeah we break all those rules so yeah because i don't like the smell of cigarette smoke personally and That's uh fair. Somebody, yeah that was quite the analogy okay uh, yeah you was, heard that right i know yeah. and uh yeah just if that's happening in my house. Uh, I don't know if I'd be ready to invite him back. And uh, that he is ready to invite us back forever to his place is pretty amazing. Yeah, it really is. Um, okay, so God's house, God's rules. Mm -hmm. um, what's your, your big application in that? Like, yeah. what do we take away from that as Christians, as believers here at Table Rock? What are we, what are we trying to do with that? Mm -hmm. I think for me, it just moves me to worship that okay. he is this God. And um, I tend to shy away from, you know, these horror passages in the Bible a little bit, yeah. right? Like it They're just gets really intense. Vicious. yeah, Vicious. So true. Right. And uh, yet I see that to the degree that I do that and I soft pedal and kind of turn a blind eye to those passages or just kind of speed read through them. Yeah. Um, I deprive myself something of the greatness of this salvation. And uh, that's, yeah, I was just super moved uh, this week. Didn't mention it last night, but it came up in my prayer a little bit uh, at the end of this uh, morning service, the Sunday service. So there I was living in these just bleak passages of scripture, like for the week, looking at uh, the horror of sin and how God enforces his rules. And then around uh, Thursday, really began pressing in on the gospel some more. And just yeah. in listening to uh, that solace song out of Romans chapter 3, um, yeah, I actually like was fighting back tears in my eyes because of just the beauty of the gospel and how yeah. great the salvation is. So to the extent that uh, in terms of an ideal response and what we would might, the first thing we might do with it is just worship the Lord and give thanks to him for really how great he is. And, um, and then next, I think hopefully giving people confidence to um, just hold fast to his word to stand on the gospel, to uh, stand, um, be true to what he says, and then to have wisdom. Now, how do we navigate this culture? How do we engage the folks in our family, our neighbors, um, all of the stuff? What happens when, um, you know, uh, the issue presents itself to us and it's yeah. really where we're living right now, right? Yeah, for sure. That is definitely one of those questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, so it's a great lead in. Okay. Incredible. Perfect. <laughs> um, in those moments when our family members, friends, uh, work associates um, profess to be LGBTQ, uh, what, is, what is your response? Like, I, I don't know if you've had personal connection to that or not. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It is hard. Yeah, that's right. So. My response, um, I remember being a little kid and um, my uh, mom had a friend that she invited over and this friend brought her girlfriend and I think it was the first time that I'd seen girls affectionate towards one another. So this would have been like late 70s, early 80s or something yeah. a long time ago and in a place far, far away. And um, that image, I mean, I still can see, you know, their affection basically. Um, and then uh, a bit more recently, um, we had an invitation, Jenny and I did, um, to a party in California and um, 
Uh, this family member of ours uh, has always treated us well, appreciate yeah. him, um, have been to his house, gone to, uh, anyway, and he is, uh, he is, actually he was a Methodist minister, married to a gal with kids, and then a number of years ago, um, divorced his wife and engaged a committed relationship with a man and uh, so we have that's been a part of our family story and how do we interact with him engage them and i remember when we'd be there uh, they would just show us hospitality invited us to the parties and you know and so yeah. we'd go and would look for an opportunity to just uh, love well and speak truthfully and I remember going to a Christmas party at their house one time and just praying for an opportunity to do those things. And, uh, and the conversation turned without me doing it to Jesus. There was a Bart Ehrman book out at the time, misquoting Jesus. And, uh, and we had a long conversation, probably over an hour, just about Jesus wow. and the scriptures. That's awesome. And they were all stoked. They're like, what are the chances that some expert on this book would say? I'm like, I'm not an expert on the book, <laughs> but you know, that sort of a thing. Yeah. They were complimentary. And it did turn out to be just a good opportunity to love well and to speak the truth. Uh, but there was an engagement that, um, and that's what we see, is that Jesus is the friend of sinners. And when they invited him to his party, he would go. He would hang out um, and to try to do that in a way that doesn't compromise. Well, a few years later, they um, had a party in California. It was scheduled for August, and we got like kind of a fancy invitation to it. They said, you take care of the travel. We'll take care of everything else. This bit, we've reserved a floor at this fancy hotel. And you get here and everything else is taken care of. And it just looked a little bit too formal. This is when Proposition 8 was in California. And... Uh, same-sex marriage was, you know, in all the headlines and everything. And I said to my wife, I think this is going to be a wedding. Like this party is, it looks like it's going to turn into yeah. a wedding. And so we decided we had, our daughters were really young at that time. And we decided not to go to that wedding at that time. I think we sent a fruit basket from Harry and David's or something, Classic. you know, right. And so um, that's what we did then. Um, there was a, uh, so that's a little bit, uh, that's yeah. an engagement of it. Yeah. Um, you want me to keep telling stories? You want me to, do you want to ask another question? I, I do have a, a tangent. Let's go there. Um, in that, I think, I think you're right. I think love is what God has called us to, to both yeah. the sinner and the saint. Yeah. And all of us are sinners in need of a loving God who wants to save us from yes. our sin. That's right. Um, and so none of us are better than anyone else. But I think for me, sometimes I've seen, I think, the, the depravity of even Christianity, mm. specifically in regards to this subject, where you just see um, someone who just hates and hates and hates mm. it so much, and they just push against it and fight against it. And even though the person doesn't know the Lord, they're like, you mm. are a sinner, and you mm -hmm. are just the worst of all humanity. Yeah. Um, as, as a believer, how do you how do you deal with that when one of your brothers and sisters is condemning someone and throwing that first stone, yeah. though we have no right to? Yeah, um, and we've seen it, right? I picture yeah. um, there was uh, Matthew Shepard, this uh, I think gay guy who died back uh, a number of years ago, and there were these a pastor and some people from this Baptist church that showed up and picketed the funeral. God hates, you know, such and yeah. such. Um, and so how do you not be that guy? Yeah. And remain faithful to what the word says. And yet, how do you love your neighbor as yourself? That sort of thing. Um, so there was a time in... Um, Virginia, we we're back there. I was going to school and I was going to a Christian school. And there was a professor in the school, I think in the counseling department. The school had a uh, community lifestyle commitment form that we all agreed to if we're going to be a part of the Classic, Christian yeah. community, right? And uh, we all signed off on that. And the pref professor who was there was outside the bounds of it. So you could, at that, this would have been like 2001, 2002, okay. where you could be um, uh, 
homosexual or you could be he, say he's gay experience the mm -hmm. same sex attraction but not engaged in a relationship right. not practicing and so he turned out he did have somebody living with him and they I think he lost his job wow. and this there was students who were so fired up about it that they wanted to stage a protest on the campus about that and this protest was to un furl a 250 foot long rainbow flag on the grass lawn wow. of the campus yeah. and invite the entire student body to wear bright colored clothings in solidarity with this professor who had been dismissed for his violation of the community lifestyle commitment and i saw that and i thought i don't like what is happening here i happen to be in a program that talked about when to protest and not protest and all of that and there were a variety of reasons but the thing that i uh was most distasteful about that to me is this wasn't just down at city hall uh, but this was a christian school where we're all there by choice no anyone yeah. who's there knew in advance uh, what you're coming to you know they, they weren't nobody was surprised by it and i th and this was when tolerance was a big thing and so i thought uh who are they to come here and tell us what's right and wrong about you know where we land and all of that getting to your question of how do you engage this in yeah. a way that's not like the you know picketing a funeral sort of a thing so i did have a counter protest that day and whether rather than wearing brightly colored clothes uh, i showed up like johnny cash the man in black and there on the campus um, uh, that particular group in the body of christ i uh, was big into foot washing and so there and in fact there was a statue a nice statue on campus of a foot washing thing they would practice it in their church services and stuff and so that's what i did is i showed up with my basin and my black clothes wow. and putting uh scriptures onto the fountain um to have a conversation with them but i said because i know that you're thinking i'm this guy picketing the funeral and you're thinking I'm just a hater showing yeah. up. I think I'm most, I'm easily mischaracterized and stereotyped. So before we have that conversation, what I want to let you know is that God loves you, even though we're on different sides of this particular issue, yeah. and so do I. And so what I want to do is wash your feet as a demonstration, uh, because that's what Christ did his disciples. And he did this even to, some, to Judas who betrayed him, right? And so let me wash your feet. And then we can have this conversation about what I believe and what you believe and what the Bible says. Yeah. And I had a couple of them take me up on it. Um, two out of the, you know, many. hundred or whatever. Yeah, yeah it wasn't that many. Oh, but okay. uh, yeah, there were there maybe throughout the day, uh, over a hundred people uh, circulated through. Um, so I think we want to hold on to speaking the truth in love is super important. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I agree. But I think that's one of the hardest things to do sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's something that is very difficult for Christians to do now because we get so stuck in what the world says and we start to value our care for ourselves and we don't want to put ourselves out there and we don't want to speak his truth. We're like, oh, we're going to just get our heads bitten off. This isn't worth it. Yeah. Um, and we just value ourselves more than the people around us. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about it. Um, it showed up in the uh, deacons meeting this morning. A comment of, wow, for these hot summer topics, I thought it was going to be a little bit more right or left and a bit more political and the gospel just keeps showing up, you know, and I thought, yeah, that's how we do it. Um, in my mind, um, we're not seeking, uh, there's a proverb, and it doesn't say he that wins elections is wise but he who wins souls is wise yeah. and that for me um yeah that's going to be primary that i don't mainly just want to win this issue i want to win the person to christ and what i've seen many times is that it's after somebody trusts christ right that their views on things change and come into alignment with the lord and his word and so seldom do i just want to win this argument um, and regularly, I want to engage the person in a meaningful way to continue the conversation. So yeah. one of the things that we're asked a lot right now is, okay, so what about pronouns? What about, you know, yeah. I, my personal pronouns are, and I actually heard a good one from Chloe, you know, my daughter last night. Yeah. So she's 14 and, you know, just going in freshman year over at Crater uh, this fall. 
couple of weeks and she says oh yeah me and my friends uh, say our personal pronouns are she excuse me her she and bar have you heard this one i don't think so so that's what they say uh, my personal pronouns are hershey bar that's pretty much it, right? So, All right. right. So <laughs> what do you do with the personal pronouns when they uh, say, I want you to call me such and such? You know, and I just had a conversation with a brother talking about how his son now wants dad to refer to him as she and her. Like, this is tough stuff, you know? Yeah. And It's uh, very real, very fast. Very real. Yeah, so true, right? And uh, last summer, there was a guy who came to Medford, Carl Truman, and he wrote a book on this stuff, and it's been called the most um, important evangelical book written in the last 50 years uh, on these things. Mm -hmm. And his starting point was, um, my dad worked in a coal mine um, his whole life in, in England and died in 1994. And he said, if you would have gone to my dad, in 1993 and said to him, I am a woman trapped in a man's body. He said that his dad would have just, first of all, laughed out loud. Yeah. And the statement would have been completely meaningless to him. Just incomprehensible. He would not have understood at all yeah. what you were saying to him. And so Truman's thing is, how did we get from there in 1994 to here in 2022, he was speaking in 2021, where anything less than full-throated affirmation of that statement is canceled. Okay. And uh, I found it super helpful. And um, this week, um, yeah, sending out uh, some summary that I wrote of that. So he's got a book and different yeah. things. Um, so in the da daily devotionals, that, that stuff's going out this week. Um, if any of you guys aren't signed up for those daily devotionals, just get in touch with me via, via text or email or front office. We can get you that material. But um, that was a question in the question and answer time at the end. And his answer was super helpful for me on the pronouns bit. Someone said, so what do I do when they want me to refer to them as a different pronoun that I would normally refer to them as. Yeah. And his question was, uh, his point, his answer was, I start out, um, and this is somebody maybe more than like the grocery store clerk, but somebody that you already kind of know. He says, and he says, if they stop talking to me, who are they going to start talking to? So if I, as a Christian and an ambassador that God has and his providence placed in their life, we have some kind of a relationship here. Yeah. And then I do something to the conversation, take such a stand that we're not going to talk anymore. Who are they going to talk to? So his approach is this, where he says um, to the person, um, so I understand that you want me to refer to you as she. And um, I just want to let you know that uh, for me, like that's not something that I would normally do, but for the sake of uh, our conversation and our relationship, I'm willing to make this concession to you so that we can continue a conversation that and a relationship that I think is bigger than your personal pronouns. And I think not, that might not be for everybody, right? but I found his answer to that question to be instructive, to be able to... Um, just basically, there's an elephant in the room here, and is this a hill that I need to die? Well, I'm getting all a mixed metaphor. <laughs> here's the <laughs> elephant in the room, and let's talk about it first of all. Yeah. To say that uh, I'm not just making a concession uh, without talking about it, so that you misunderstand what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm making a concession out of love for you and a, a reality that mm, there might become a point where we can talk about this more in depth later and I can let you know more of what I think and you know why it would be hard for me to do that. Um, now that's one thing if it's uh, you know your neighbor across the fence. Uh, I don't know what it's like to be the guy that I was having or, you know visiting with after the worship service today who it's your own son who's doing this. So I wouldn't presume to you know, provide hard, fast instruction there. Yeah. You need the wisdom of Solomon in these things. Um, and uh, so, yeah. How about you, Jordan? What have you thought about these things? 
as far as which question? Um, whichever one you want to engage. Whichever one. <laughs> There's a bunch of them out Perfect, there. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think just in our conversations, I, yeah. I think... One of my favorite things in these moments is like Jesus is always our our guide in these moments, and not that the LGBTQ community is the lepers or whatever. Right. But I think that Jesus shows his example to us in that it doesn't matter how unclean they are, it doesn't matter what their reputation is. Mm-hmm. Like, he wants to love them, he wants to engage with them, he wants to show them the truth and give them living water and to give them himself. I think that's what he calls us to do all the time is to uh, not think so highly of yourself that you can't enter into those conversations, not think that you're too good for it or you're above it or that uh, they don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. Um, Because at one point we were stuck in our sin and just lowly and debased and and Jesus said, I'm going to pick you up I'm going to take your sin and your dirt and make you clean and then I'm going to give you this amazing mission to go and share that with other people yeah I think that's what he calls us to is to be his hands and feet in love to a generation that rejects him and very well could reject us Mm -hmm. and his gospel is worth that Mm -hmm. his his gospel and his mission to us is worth any amount of pain or ridicule or anything that we can take on this planet Mm -hmm. yeah that's right it is yeah and and i I don't know i just i love that i love that Mm -hmm. jesus has shown us that example and said like guys i am the god of the universe Mm -hmm. i've stepped down in human flesh and i'm hanging out with the people that no one else wants to to Mm -hmm. show you guys that i care about them and that you should care about them Mm -hmm. um and in that same way, I think with us as humans, whether it's uh, the adulterer or the, the people that don't understand in the LGBTQ community or uh, the murderer or mm-hmm. what have you, like God calls us to seek them and, and to bring them to know Him. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. He does. You know, we got a call at the church office this week from a gal, and she said, um, so I am a lesbian and I am looking for a church. And there's a bunch of churches that have protocols and that sort of thing. And uh, basically wondering, where would I fit in at Table Rock? Could I come? You know, that sort of a thing. And I followed up with her and couldn't connect the phone call to the receptionist got cut off. And I don't know all the details there. But... um, if I was able to visit with her on the phone, I really like the uh, sign that we have here. Uh, it says, welcome home. And in Romans, it says that we are to welcome uh, others as God in Christ has welcomed you. Yeah. And there's something, the way that God welcomed me um, in Christ, there weren't a lot of uh, things I needed to do to clean up my act before that happened. It was through simple faith in Christ. And for the worship services that we have, um, so I would have wanted to say, uh, do come. And it was really interesting providence, right? Because I've never uh, given an entire message to LGBTQ+. Yeah. And I've never had uh, somebody call on a Thursday saying, I'm part of that community. I want to come to church. I want to come to church. Yeah. And so I really wanted her to come today. Yeah. And I hope she was, maybe she did come today, and yeah. I don't know. Uh, but I hope that she was here and that we can welcome people to exposure of the gospel. And I think that's all um, healthy and good. Um, and there does come a point, you know, in terms of people putting faith in Christ and Uh, getting baptized, that uh, we won't be persisting in things that the Bible doesn't, uh, it tells us not to, we don't persist in our sin, and there is something uh, about the purity of the church and all that, so we want to hold on to both of those things, but in terms of how we function here at Table Rock Fellowship, um, worship services are open to everybody, everybody's welcome, come, let's, uh, we're proclaiming the gospel, and people are getting saved, and it's a wonderful thing, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. I, I I agree with that sentiment completely, and I think in that Jesus isn't trying to change our actions; he's trying to change our hearts, mm-hmm. and he's trying to bring us back to him, 
on a heart level. Uh, that's why he was okay with entering into all these homes of sin and depravity. Uh, like, if, you know, he wanted to change their heart because he knew that in turn would change their actions and bring them to himself. Yes. He's not worried about the symptoms, though. He's worried about the the disease. Yeah, the, that's right. The root of it. Yeah. Right? It's, he's not just sticking little wax apples on us, yeah. this fruit, right, on the outside uh, yeah. in. But so true, man. Yeah, if I needed to clean up my act before I came to Christ, it never would have happened. 100%. Right? Yeah. And yet, um, I came in my the big fat mess that I was in, and he changed my life. Like, I mean, so, so, so much in like, ev yeah. I mean, not that I've arrived or anything like that. I was gonna say, it's not like we don't sin at this point or make mistakes, but. Yeah, God. but thankfully, yeah. like it's, my life looks so different than it did in 1997. Yeah. When I was a hippie, hippie boy, trust in Christ. My hair was a little bit longer than yours, Jordan. Impressive. You'd be kind of jealous, Impressive. right? My beard was never as long as yours, though. <laughs> so um, you got me there. But uh, that, yeah, just that I would, um, yeah, and I'm super glad, like that Sunday, that I got saved. I'm super glad that I went, didn't go to church, and they said, whoa, 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 whoa. Your kind can't come in these doors. You're going to need to cut that hair before you come across this threshold right? There's a great old story from Calvary Chapel and Chuck Smith where the, it was the Jesus People Movement and the Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa had gotten new carpet in the sanctuary and the elders were a little bit concerned about these barefooted hippies. Like, they're going to come in and make our carpet dirty. So we need to put up a sign on the door that says, you know, no shirt, no shoes, no service or something, right? You can't come in yeah. here until you put some shoes or at least some sandals right, some on that, those yeah. bare feet. And as the story goes, Chuck said, okay, you guys got to do what you got to do. And that Sunday, this time it was him with the basin. He showed up ready to wash the hippies' feet before they came in so that he wouldn't t have to tell them, put on some shoes. Uh, right. I'm going to clean your feet because, you know, the elders want you to have clean feet before you come onto the carpet. They care about this, but we care about you. And I think it's just such a good posture for us as Christians to say, yep, we're here washing the feet of people with dirty feet. And Jesus loves people no matter how stinky your feet are. And he died to save us. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's right where we want to be. Yeah, I appreciate that sentiment. I feel like it's that story of there's a lot of churches out there. I feel like if Jesus showed up at their door from you know back when he was mm. in Jerusalem, they wouldn't even allow him in. Wow. Be like, yeah, you're kind of scary. You're dirty. Uh, like you know, even walk around in these streets filled with poop. Like yeah. you just like can't come in. And it's like the point that we get to um, like turning people away from coming into the church is heartbreaking. Mm. Because yeah. Jesus didn't turn anyone away. He said, like, please, let them come. And he didn't come to heal the, the perfect, clean, uh, put-together person. He came to heal the sick and the hurting and the dirty and disgusting. Mm -hmm. And I think even in my own life, I have times where I'm like, man, I, we just get very superficial sometimes. And mm -hmm. we see a name or we see a way that they dress or just something they do and we're like turned off entirely to sharing the gospel with right. them. Mm -hmm. And that's heartbreaking because that's the opposite of what Jesus was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, complete uh, change of subject on you. All right. Not subject, but um, a question I wanted to ask you was, and you alluded to it a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. but I think there is a distinction, and maybe there's not, but for you, so you have two people in your life. One is a, a non-Christian um, friend who is professing LGBTQ stuff, sin, and then you have a brother in Christ who also is professing that. Is there a difference in how you interact with those two? Or is there not? What? Yeah. How do you go about that? Yeah. Um, I love your question, and I want to love both of those uh, individuals. So let's say it's, if I'm hearing your question, I got two guys in my life. Uh, one's yeah. a Christian and one's a uh, non-Christian, yeah. and they both experience same-sex attraction. Right. Okay. 
Um, yes, I am interacting with them a little bit differently um, because uh, the one has the Holy Spirit and has believed the gospel and has professed faith in Christ and the other one hasn't. And so I want both of them to trust Jesus. Yeah. And so it's the message is the same to both of them, but the implications of what happens when they trust Jesus are going to be different. The one guy is going to trust Jesus maybe for the first time and get born again, and now it's growing them in their relationship with Christ. And the other guy is professing faith in Jesus. Yeah. And um, oh yeah, but I want to get super practical too. Professing faith in Jesus, but then uh, maybe. Well, just battling. Let's say he's battling the yeah. same-sex attraction. So, um, for the... Uh, let's see. I'm going to say to the Christian who's experiencing same-sex attraction, um, you really should... Uh, you don't want to act on that. Um, the, now, I know uh, two guys that I mentioned in the message today... Yeah who, um, yeah, they are Christians who experienced same-sex attraction before um, faith in Christ, before they were Christians. One of them's married. He's a church planter in Idaho, um, and he's really open about his whole testimony with his church. You guys can go to his website. It's Revelation Church, Coeur d'Alene. His name's Zach Adams. Um, I serve as a provisional elder on that church plant. And they are reaching the arts community in Coeur d'Alene. And Zach is happily married to an awesome gal, Joanna. Joanna and my wife, Jenny, were pregnant with uh, their firstborn at the mm. same so uh, same time. They sat in the crying mom's room pregnant together, right? <laughs> sort of a thing. Yeah. And uh, I call it the crying mom's room, but, you know, crying baby's room. <laughs> and uh, so... Good clarification. Yeah, for sure. And so... Uh, Zach is happily married to Joanna. Uh, they've got one biological daughter um, and one who's adopted, and he's pastor in a church. And yeah, uh, awesome brother, good friend. Um, and he did experience same sex attraction, and yet now he's happily married and, yeah. you know, all of that stuff, and is a church planner. Uh, another, the other friend that I mentioned is over here in Grants Pass, and um, he uh, has made videos and posted those through a church website over there, uh, through River Valley Community Church in Grants Pass, and he, um, I was in a same-sex uh, relationship, was planning on getting married, the whole deal, and the Lord uh, saved him rescued him. Uh, one night he went and went to a Christian's house and heard the gospel and trusted Christ and broke up with his boyfriend and has been practicing celibacy ever since then. And when, But it's, it's a battle. And I don't know, you know how that works out yeah. uh, for him. Um, and uh, so for, let's say for him, and as I was discipling him, uh, that's what I'm encouraging him in, is like Yep, you don't want to practice same-sex behavior, um, that there is uh, celibacy is an option in the Christian life, and perhaps um, God will change your desires so that you are attracted to a woman and maybe you'll get married, but maybe he won't. Like, that's a really hard thing, right? Yeah. That the kingdom of God is already and not yet. It's already consummated, or excuse me, already inaugurated, not yet consummated. Yeah. Sometimes God does heal us of cancer. Sometimes he does uh, give us victory over temptation in ways that we're not tempted by it anymore. Um, but other times he doesn't. Sometimes the, the, he doesn't heal us of the cancer. Yeah. And uh, John Newton, you know, he wrote Amazing Grace, and uh, he was frustrated in his 80s that he was still struggling with um, lust that he battled in his 20s. And the Lord gave him a breakthrough because it kind of his expectation was, as I grow in my faith in Christ and get closer to him, the sexual temptations, I'm going to have, it's going to be more and more victory, less and less struggle. The expected inverse relationship where your relationship with Jesus goes up and your sin goes down. Yeah. Exactly. And that wasn't his experience. Yeah. And he was frustrated by it. And 
what he realized is that our relationship with Christ and our walk with the Lord is never intended to bring us to the point where we don't need to depend on his grace anymore. And that there is something, God is glorified in the way that he gives us grace to persevere through all of the struggle. So that, um, you know, Job is given grace to praise him all, you know, not without struggle, not without some griping and complaining, but never cursing God. And so that God is glorified um, in the struggle as we continue to, to praise him. And so for uh, my friend in Grant's pass, I'd say to him, um, I don't know what that's going to be like for you. Kingdom is inaugurated, praise God. Yeah. Um, and you're responding well by, you know, you did break off that relationship that you would be tempted to sin in. Um, but I, I don't want to overpromise you and say that you're never going to struggle with that again. And I know for a fact, just in talking with him, it continues to be a struggle. Yeah. Um, and nevertheless, in the midst of that struggle, God is giving him the grace and God is being glorified in his life. And, uh, but for the non-Christian who's maybe in a relationship, my counsel, um, oh, let's say to the guy over here in Grants Pass, the Christian, I would counsel him like if he hadn't already broken up with his boyfriend, I'd let him know, yeah, you're, you're going to need to not yeah. be engaged in, you know, you're going to need some distance there. Yeah. To the non-Christian, um, if uh, this is a little bit extreme, but if they wanted to come together uh, to a worship service and praise the Lord, uh, it's going to be a distraction if they're putting their arms around people. So you know that's a thing as a pastor you got to consider, but or putting their arms around each other in the worship service. But if they want to come and hear the gospel, praise the Lord, come and hear the gospel. Um, and then once they trust Christ and are born again. Um, now I think we're like kind of into that different set of counsel. Long answer to a simple question, yeah, but no, well, it's, it's a simple kind of a, question. But yeah, yeah, there's some complex issues yeah, that we for sure. pastorally want to shepherd through. Yeah, and I think even like as you're talking about being a distraction, that's not even just an expectation for them. It's an expectation for everyone in the worship service. Yes. Like if someone's being a wild distraction, even if like a man and his wife, they yes. could very easily be a distraction in that way mm -hmm. as well. So it's not like a yeah, I don't know. I just in my mind, it's like it's not a just them. It's an it's an everyone. Right. We're all coming together to worship and to encourage one another in that kind of like your house, your rules. Like if you come into someone else's house, like you can yeah. hold to a certain expectation. Expectation. Yeah. yeah. No, that's great. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really yeah wonderful, and I think. That in that, even in that struggle that you're talking about, because again, I think God gives all of us sometimes burdens and things to to remind us of our dependency on Him, like you were saying. I'm always reminded of the Lord's Prayer, or like, you know, or the the story uh, in Exodus, talking about manna. Like, He never gives them mm. any more than that day. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of times we're like, I want to be done with this and just mm. out of my life. And God's like, I'm going to give you enough strength for today. You don't mm -hmm. get to worry about tomorrow. You don't get to worry about the next day or the next mm -hmm. year. For today, the strength I'm going to give you will be enough. And mm -hmm. you just have to rest in that and trust me that I can do that. Love the connection. Give us this day our daily bread. Sufficient for the day are the troubles therein. Yeah. The manna, you're not supposed to gather it up for tomorrow. The cares of tomorrow will take care of themselves, right? For but, sure. Uh, just for today. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Okay. Um, I know you mentioned one book, but I know there's a lot of great resources out there on this subject. Are there any yeah. that you would just highly recommend and be like, well, man, you could read this. I think it illuminates it even more than what you talked about today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the one that's kind of on my radar right now is um, by Carl Truman and um, I am actually forgetting the name of it right now, uh, but it's nice. going to be in the Put email, you on the spot, right? So, gotcha. yeah. so it is, um, let me think. Uh, oh, it's the triumph of the modern self. That's the thick version. Okay. And then um, he has an abbreviated one for churches, and I'm going to be offering a study on that this fall. 
Um, looking at that question, how, how did we get to this point where I'm a woman trapped in a man's body is something that everybody needs to affirm. Um, what happened? Uh, kind of what's the intellectual history of that? And how do we think about it as Christians? Um, so that'll be a video study to help people have some discussion about that, think about it in uh, maybe a deeper way. Um, and again, that'll be going out this week. So Truman's work is really good on it. There's another one um, called The Gospel and Same-Sex Marriage, and it's by Russell Moore. Um, I found that to be helpful. That's yeah. where I gleaned the idea of um, applying already not yet to this particular issue of same-sex attraction and how realistic of an expectation can people have that okay so am I not going to be attracted to the same sex anymore right, and yeah. you know all of that stuff so um, I think those are two pretty helpful works and uh, Gary Brashears has thought really in an involved way about these things and taught on them uh, a bunch and he's got a website I think it's brashears.net that has um, a lot of additional resources um, for people to dig in further yeah. how about you have you read anything that is you found really helpful um arthur pink has put out some some fun stuff on that oh really um yeah and so again my like go-to is always the bible yes. <laughs> yeah, i think too. If you can just saturate yourself in the gospel over and over again it's yeah. it's going to illuminate you but yeah i think arthur pink has put out some fun stuff and some of it uh, i think he presents some ideas that are not always something that i'm agreeing with um, but i i like that to some extent knowing that i'm not just hearing the same um the same person say the same thing. I'm hearing different ideas from different people. Um, so, yeah, Arthur Pink is a fun author, but yeah, take everything with a grain of salt and know that it's not the gospel. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, do you have any other final thoughts for today? Just praise God for His grace. Where yeah. uh, grace, excuse me, where sin abounds, grace does much more abound. You don't want to get it backwards. Uh, but you know where grace abounds sin does much more abound but where sin abounds grace does much more abound that there is um, no matter how much I sin or you sin or we sin or the entire world sins there is way more of God's grace to um, super abound over all our sin and uh, there's good hope for us I agree and yeah, I appreciate you tackling this subject and mm -hmm. And just reminding us that the gospel applies to us yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and we can we can never move past that. It's it's always good and enriching and and just wonderful. So yeah, thank you for bringing us back to Jesus. Thank you for reminding us that it's God's house and God's rules. Yeah. And yeah, for handling a subject that's, that's very difficult and a very mm respectful and, and caring way mm. yeah well thank you yeah. it's been a privilege so, yeah yeah hope you guys enjoyed this conversation and if you have any other questions or thoughts that come up talking about this stuff talking about the gospel is our favorite thing to do so mm. come find us come talk to us about it we'd love to to talk more so, yeah hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon and yeah may god's peace and his love and his grace follow you all of today and tomorrow and all of your lives. So thank you guys. See you soon.